It's happening. One of America's most pathetically woke newspapers is slashing jobs in response to their hemorrhaging readers, all as the legacy media continues to implode. We're going to see the latest on yet another lamestream media outlet collapsing and precisely why the legacy media is going down faster than any of us could have ever imagined. You're not going to want to miss this. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your Patriot Professor, here to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. You know, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, if you would, please share this video with friends and family. We are once again being throttled by big tech, so I need your help to get the hopeful message of this channel out to as many people as possible. The rabidly anti-Trump Washington Post, that shameless shill for all things woke, is in trouble. It's just been announced that the paper is slashing their workforce by hundreds in response to a significant decline in readership and subscriptions, and therefore, of course, ad revenue. Now, according to the New York Times, which is having its own issues, the Post is estimated to be losing upwards of $100 million by year's end. Its audience is down 30%. Its subscriptions are down 15%. Its print revenue is down 10%. And its digital ad revenue is down 30%. All told, the Post has lost over half a million readers over the course of the last two years. And so they've been left with, frankly, no choice but to slash their workforce by at least 10%. Now, obviously, it goes without saying it's not just the Washington Post that's experiencing this fall. It's actually par for the course for the newspaper media as a whole. Get this, you may not know this, but over 2,000 papers have folded, no pun intended, over the last 15 years. Yes, you heard that right. Over 2,000 thousand newspapers have permanent clo permanently closed their doors in just over the last decade. And of course, it's not just newspapers. The whole of the legacy media, the one-time mainstream media, is collapsing right before our very eyes. CNN's audience has fallen 90% in two years. And then, of course, Fox News, they've lost nearly half their audience since firing Tucker Carlson, the host of their number one show, Idiots. The ultra left is Vice News has filed for bankruptcy. Their flagship Vice News tonight has been canceled. And that news came on the heels of the announcement that the ultra left BuzzFeed News was permanently closing its doors. I mean, are you seeing a pattern here? But here's the key. It's not all media that's hemorrhaging audiences, but only the legacy media. Check this out. While the lamestream media shrinks and shrivels, Look at Substack readership. Look at this. Substack paid subscriber growth has skyrocketed. It's gone from 25,000 in 2018 to over 2 million today. It's the exact opposite of the lamestream media, whose demise is only just beginning. Wait until you hear some of these statistics. You're gonna, they're going to absolutely shock you. But first, have you considered what you might do with the Democrats and their willing accomplices in the legacy media steal another presidential election? If so, then you're like the millions of patriots who are hedging their bets by getting involved with Texit, the Texas nationalist movement. And we got a special meet and greet I want to invite you to. From November 9th to 12th of this year, my team and I will be in Waco, Texas for this year's TexitCon. Put on by the esteemed Texas nationalist movement, it represents nothing less than the foremost nationalist secessionist movement in the entire country, which is a huge hedge if things go awry for us in 2024 and the Democrats play their pathetic election shenanigans again. I'll be doing a live meet and greet for my Insiders Club members at this year's conference, and I hope to see as many Texas Turley talkers as possible. Let's set a new attendance record and show the woke demons in D.C. that patriots have had enough. And we're going to preserve a society of faith, family, and freedom one way or another. Click on the link in the description below to get your tickets now, and I'll see you all in Waco. We have to recognize just how far the legacy media has fallen here. You see, in the 1960s, 50 million people on average got their news from the three networks. Cronkite alone could pull in 3 million. That's when our nation had a population of around 200 million. Today, our country is approaching 350 million. And when you combine all the networks and cable news outlets, combine them all, the total, total viewership is barely 20 million. 
Today, all the networks, all the cable news outlets combined don't get the audience that Walter Cronkite alone was able to get. The legacy media has imploded, and this is largely because they're embracing what's called advocacy journalism. Advocacy journalism begins with the woke leftist partisan narrative that they want to advance, and then the so-called journalist attempts to fit the so-called facts into that frame, into that narrative. So advocacy journalism almost inevitably commits the fallacy known as confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is when you deliberately configure information and data specifically to support one's prior beliefs and values. So it's basically a kangaroo court. And this is why more and more people see the so-called information coming out of the legacy media as no more trustworthy than so-called scientific data coming out of Philip Morris or Marlboro cigarettes. Remember when Lester Holt of NBC News shocked his audience when he was accepting an award in a media symposium some months back. He actually he made the rather shocking admission that, quote, it's become clear that fairness is overrated, saying that the idea that we should always give two sides equal weight and merit does not reflect the world we find ourselves in. I mean, they're openly admitting that they pick sides. They're blatantly partisan. And irony in all of this is that that partisanship is actually killing the legacy media as a viable business model. Because when all is said and done, the success of modern journalism is built on trust. And the only way modern journalism works is if audiences trust the news outlets as reliable mediators of information. If there's a significant doubt that arises from that, if audiences begin to suspect that they're being you know, fed partisan talking points, then they're going to look elsewhere for their information, like Substack. So you can see how these two dynamics interrelate. The more partisan the legacy media appears, the more trust in the media erodes, and the more trust in the media erodes, the more they hemorrhage audience, which means that the only audience that's left are the fringe partisan diehards who want the media to go even further left, and then the whole cycle repeats once again. And so what all of this means is that the days of the legacy media really are coming to an end. You know, of course, we continue to be treated to the silly kabuki theater where politicians come out and address the media, oh, blah, blah, blah. But less viewers are taking them seriously than ever before. The days of the legacy media are quickly coming to a decisive end. Are you ready to join the resistance? Because I'm leading a group of dedicated, courageous patriots who can lead a spearhead into the heart of the secular globalist establishment. We punish Bud Light and Target, driven CNN and the legacy media to near bankruptcy, forced BlackRock to backtrack on ESG, and now we're seeing our conservative-dominated Supreme Court ending affirmative action and protecting religious liberty. In my Insiders Club, I show you concrete steps to take locally and online that will only keep this mass uprising going until the battle is won. Don't wait. Click the link in my description below and join my Courageous Patriots Insiders Club today.